Isang pagpalang gabi po sa inyong lahat o umaga o tanghali o anumang oras po ng araw makarating umapanood po ninyo ang mensaheng ito na ay maging isang pagpala at kalakasan po sa inyong lahat kayong mga narito sa Pilipinas, at your home or here and abroad ang mensaheng po ito ay para po sa ating lahat para sa inyong lahat, para sa inyong kalakasan What inspired me to preach this message is for people to know that um, there are times in our lives, even in the church, that uh, the glory of the Lord fades out without knowing it. And the reason why, iyan po yung matatalakayan po natin. So, the Lord's message for tonight or today is when the glory of the Lord fades out. About 400 years before Solomon dedicated the Temple of God, the Israelites were still worshiping idols in their life so that when they entered God's temple, it is then that the glory of the Lord fades out. So what happened from the lives of the believers or of the church? Yan, nakita po natin na the glory of the Lord uh, live, it's leaving the temple or the church. In 1 Samuel 4.22, The glory of the Lord has departed from Israel, for the ark of God has been captured. It means the ark of the covenant. Now, what is paid? Paid means to lose freshness, to lose brightness, strength, and gradually without noticing it. Akala natin ay nandun pa, pero nag-paid out na pala, kumupas na. To live slowly, and that's what will happen to men or church when the glory of the Lord fades out. Now, it was said that um, the glory of the Lord fades out because they lost the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant symbolizes the presence of God or the throne of God. It, is, it represents God's power in the lives of the believers. Maalala po na noong unang panahon during the Old Testament times, the Ark of the Covenant 
presence of the Ark of the Covenant in the life of the Israelites is a sure guarantee that uh, they will win all the battles. But take note that um, uh, there are times Old Testament uh, era that they lost the Ark of the Covenant to the hands of the Philistine. And what happened when the Ark of the Covenant was captured by the enemy, it will surely result into the fading out of God's glory or God's glory moving out of the lives of Israel. Yan, yan po ang Ark of the Covenant. Now, tonight, I'll be telling you what are the reasons why this Ark of the Covenant or the loss of the Ark of the Covenant signaled the loss or the fading away of God's glory in the life of the believers and in the church. So I'm now talking about lives of the present generation. And there are seven sins that drives out God's glory. At nawa po, ito ay tinap po ninyo habang pinapanood po ninyo, habang nakikinig po kayo. Check yourself. Just check yourself one by one. Anyone, hindi man po lahat, or any one of the seven ay mangyari or uh, you're guilty of this. Surely, you're not aware of it, but maybe the glory of the Lord is fading out. You may not feel it, but it is happening, or it may be happening right now. Now, there are seven sins that drives out God's glory. Number one, the number one reason why uh, the glory of the Lord fades out in the life of the believer or of the church is when they revolt against the church. Rebellion, by the way, is revolt against government or an active struggle against authority. Bagamat ang rebellion po ngayon ay karniwang na ikakorlit sa struggles ng mga tao against the government, now we will be using it in the struggles of the Christians or the church in maintaining the glory of the Lord in their lives. Rebellion, son of man. Ito po ang pinasabi ng Diyos kay Prophet Ezekiel sa Israel. Son of man, You are living among rebellious people. They have eyes to see, but cannot see. Ears to hear, but do not hear. For they are rebellious people. Take note. Rebellious people. So, yan po ninyo na, ganyan po nating direct example or illustrations. Yan po nangyayari sa mga churches ngayon. Alam po ba ninyo kung bakit ha? Marami mga churches ang dapat malalago na pero in the passing of times, many years na ay nagiging idol pa rin or uh, 50 bihira yung mabot na 100. Yes, there are many churches here in our country but these churches are results of, again I will use this word rebellion, splitting up at uh, In the times of uh, the prophets, many people rebelled against Israel and so the glory of the Lord departed from them. Now, naalala ko po, ito po ay isang uh, true to life experience ng PCMI. I will not mention name, but before that, I uh, was reminded by the Holy Spirit that uh, in 37 years of uh, socializing with the co-pastors and workers of the Lord and the vineyard and the church ministry. Marami pong uh, mga church or churches na nahigitan pa, naramihan pa yung matagal ng church na nag exist or na simulan. At yung pag-aaralan po natin ang mga history ng mga iyan, meron pong kinalaman sa rebellion. At yan po ay uh, split up split away. Ganyan po nangyayari noon. One time sa PCMI, I will not mention the name of the church, but it's one of our churches in the southern Luzon. Pinaghirapan po namin na uh, ipundar or simulan lumago. And in the process of growing, eh, ito pong pastor na naka-assign, na napakabait na pastor mag-asawa ito. Isang araw, nagulat na lamang kami nang makarating ang isang letter of demand sa amin. Letter request. Ito is a demand letter actually. Requesting our pastors, the couple, to be 
replace and the church exists to be a pag-ibig Christian church ministry at hindi ko na po tatang, hindi ko na po babangitin yung mga dahilan. Sama din sa'yo po, eh, rebelde po ang tawag doon, rebellion. So yung po pinaghirapan ay tanim na church, eh, bigla na lang mga na, nagkaisa sila, meron pa nagmanipulate sa uh, puso at isipan ng mga miyembro, and they, they decided to send us a letter stating that starting this month or that month, That, that's happened in 2014, I think. At kawawa naman po yung mag-asamang pastor. Ngayon, I should have contested it because ako yung senior pastor. Pero alam nyo, after our prayer, ang naging um, instruction po ng Panginoon, hayaan na lang. Because we cannot build, we cannot grow the church with that kind of rebellious people. So alam po ninyo nangyari, all things work together for good. Sabi nga sa Corinthians. Bakit? Yung po mag-asawang pastor na yon na displaced, eh, inassign namin doon sa isang lugar na nahihirapan din na mag-improve or mag-grow yung church. At alam nyo, na sila mapunta sa lugar na yon sila mag-handle yung church. Bigla po lumago ang mga kabataan, bigla lumago ang church until now. The church has been so fruitful. So all things work together for good. Nakita po natin na dyan na may purpose kong minsan kung bakit ay naalaw ng Diyos yung mga trahedya sa ating buhay. Sa church, ganun din po. Maraming mga churches ngayon, maraming mga tao ngayon, kaya hindi makita po ang glory ng Lord sa ilang buhay ay because they rebel against their pastor, the pastor of the church. Okay po. Ang pastor po ay hindi... Diyos, hindi perfecto. Nagkakamali kami. We are subject to error, mistakes, and failures. Pero hindi naman sapat yun para iwanan kami or uh, mag-rebelde laban sa amin sapagkat we are called by God, especially to, in the full-time ministry. Kaya nangyayari po doon sa mga uh, manang palataya na ganun, palipat-lipat ang church, walang masasabi na home church. Alam ninyo, isang araw, makikita nyo kay Ebano, may home church at yung palipat-lipat. Kaya, nawa, magsilbing isang aral po ito sa mga nakikinig sa mga nanonood. Do not rebel against God. Because the Lord's glory will fade out of your life. Amen. Number two, idolatry. Second sin that move, cause God's glory to move out or fade out of our life or of the church is idolatry. Idolatry is a worship of idol. Idol is an extreme admiration of love for a person or thing to love or admire blindly too much. Again, it is an extreme, extreme admiration of love for a person or thing or job or profession to admire blindly too much. Yung pong It may be in the form of your loved one. Your idols may be your loved one. Yung mga jowa ninyo, excuse my word, ano, eh, yan, pano, ito, oso ngayon, eh, jowa. Yung mga girlfriend or boyfriend. Instead na nasa worship service, nandoon, no araw, no, eh, sa bagay, hindi na pasala ng luneta ngayon, nandoon sa mga beaches. Linggo-linggo po yun. Oh, therefore, your idol is your girlfriend or your boyfriend will be, or maybe one of the reasons why the Lord will fade out of your life. Business, work or profession, linggo-linggo, wala sa church. Bakit? Nag-overtime. Lalo na po ng osupo, mausupo ang call center. Hindi natin sila masisi sapagkat uh, sa call center 24-7, ano, yan. Ngayon, okay lang po. That, so that is our uh, economic life. Pero kung kayo kristyano, manalangin kayo na Lord, naghahanap pa lang kayo ng trabaho, manalangin na Lord, wala nawang uh, uh, masasapir na Sunday, sana Sunday Lord ay walang trabaho, ganun, at bibigyan kayo ni Lord. Dreams, meron kang pangarap, nang dahil sa pangarap mo, eh, nakalumutan mo na ang Diyos. It, The best way to reach your dream is to 
partner with God. God is the best partner. Pag sinolo mo lang yun, you did it man's way, then it not God's way, then the Lord will fades out of your plan, of your life. Celebrities, yan, naku, usong-usong sa mga kabataan ngayon. Ano ang mga idol na mga kabataan, mga Koreans, oh, Ano sir, ano na mga Korean? Blackpink? BTS? Ito kasi sa ito mga audience ko dito sa studio. Mga Korean Id <coughs> idolaters. <coughs> oh, na isang araw, sa Bower Judgmental, aba, ang mga guests, ang mga participants, mga presidente ng fans club. O, ang tatanda na. O, sino idol, sinasabi yun. So, siguro, sa buhay nila, hindi magsisimba yun pagka pa nag merong, uh, pre, merong uh, uh, meeting ang fans, fans club nila. Alala ko po ng araw, no? Idol na idol na niya, balang ko si FPJ. High school pa lang ako noon. Pupunta po ko ng Manila para lang manood na pelikula ng FPJ. Pero hindi pa ako kristyano noon. Oh. Ngayon po na maging kristyano po ako, believe it or not, bihira po makatuntung ang mga paan namin ng sinihan. Makakatuntung ng sinihan kung papanoodin ay Christian movie. That is the truth from my heart. Okay. So, idolatry. Then the word of God came to me, Son of man, these men have set up idols in their hearts which serve as stumbling blocks before peace. So yung idols po ay stumbling block. Yan. Imagine, sasambahin mo ay hayop. Imagine, sasambahin mo ay mga uh, walang buhay na bagay. Ginagalang po naman natin yung, pan yung paniniwala po ng iba, no? But we are just uh, telling that our God is a jealous God. Our God is a jealous God. God that cannot tolerate people worshiping idols in their life. In Exodus 20 verse 5, You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for if the Lord your God is a jealous God. Okay. Idols are any time or anything that is still the time, adoration, priorities, and money. Yan. So, maraming mga kristyano, aminin natin, nakakapanood po tayo ng mga concert na ganang pinakamahal, pinakamahal na concert ng mga Koreans. Wait. 20,000? Oh my God! 22,000? Kaya ba manonood ng 22,000 na concert? O, sa panahon ngayon? O, ano na po yun? Pero tanongin mo, nanood ng, ng 22,000 na concert, pero tanong mo, nag-tights ka ba? Mm. E paano kayong concert na natapat ng linggo? Wala po sa charts na sa concert nanonood. Anong tawag doon? idolatry mm -hmm. because of many idols in their heart many Christians was seduced to believer without the glory of God okay so tanda po natin number two reasons or sins that fades the glory of the Lord away from your life or the church is idolatry number three sins unfaithfulness Kakulangan na katapatan. In Ezekiel 14, 13, Son of Man, if a country sin against me by being unfaithful and I stretch out my hands against it to cut off its food supply and send famine upon it and kill its people and their animals. So, in that verse, The Lord through Prophet Ezekiel say that uh, unfaithfulness is uh, sufficient for the Lord to stretch out His hands against and cut the blessing. Cut the blessing. 
O. Kaya, <clears throat> unfaithfulness is uh, breaking promises and commitment, ignoring duty and commitment, and faithlessness. <clears throat> okay. In the church, in our lives, where direct examples of unfaithfulness huwag na tayong lumayo member ka ng worship team member ka ng evangelism team oras ng pag-evangelize hindi ka kasama or gawain ng Panginoon hindi ka kasama visitation hindi ka kasama mga proyekto nag-pledge ka hindi ka hindi ka naging totoo that is unfaithfulness Pabangutin na po natin din yung tithings dyan, sapagkat tithings is uh, isa po yan sa sentro ng pinagkukunan po ng pinasis ng church and it is there where uh, in your tithings and openings it is there lies the success of massive evangelism katulad po ng ginawa ng PCMI for the last uh, for uh, 25 years kaya pinalago and most of all, when we face the judgment of God In His coming, tanda po natin na sinasabi sa Matthew 25-21, His master replied, Well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Take note, two words, Well done, good and faithful servant. Napagkatiwalaan ka sa maliit na bagay, Gagawin kita ang tagapag, uh, tagapangasiwa ng maraming bagay. Lala na niyo yung uh, parable of the talents. Parable of the talents. Ayan. Tatlo po ay binigyan ng kanya-kanya mga ta talents or puhunan. Yung isa binigyan ng lima, yung isa binigyan ng tatlo, yung isa binigyan ng isa. After a period of time, nagbalik po ang nagbigay, actually the Lord. Tiningnan kung paano ginamit o ininvest ng tatlo ang mga talents or puhunan na pinagkalob sa kanila. Yung dalawa, meron silang ibinigay, nag-account sila, ito po yung tinubo ng aming pinagkalob nyo sa amin, yung tatlo, yung lima. Pero yung isang binigay, isa na nga lang, hindi pa pinalago. Ang sabi niya, tatakot po ako eh, kaya itinago ko na lang. So, that shows unfaithfulness in doing the work of God, the assignment of God. Sa church, in the day, in the Bema judgment, malaman po natin na makita po natin yung page of period of page of time ng Diyos na yung mga faithful sa pagiwan na kailang mga gawain it will be rewarded fully by the Lord kaya nga sabi doon yung pinagkalaba ng lima ay bibigyan pa at uh, mahalain sa malaki so sa ngayon kung ano man po yung ating assignment sa church or sa ministry or ano man po yung pinapagwa sa atin ng Diyos eh maging faithful po tayo Because unfaithfulness will offend God and make Him fade away His glory in your life, in our lives. Next is unfruitfulness. In Matthew 21:18 and 19, early in the morning, as he went way back to the city, he was hungry, preparing to the Lord. Seeing a fig tree by the road, he went up to it but found nothing except leaves. Then he said to it, to the fig tree, may you never bear fruit again. Immediately, the fruit withered. Bakit nilikha ng Diyos ang mga puno? Going back at the Garden of Eden. Bakit po? Bakit nilikha ng Diyos ang mansanas hindi upang toksyon si Eva. Bakit nalika ng Diyos ang bayabas? O yung mahilig sa bayabas dyan? O, yung mahilig sa nyog, yung mahilig sa kung ano-anong sari-sari mga puno. The Lord created all these 
fruit bearing plants in order for the pastors by have to eat for the people to eat ngayon ganyan din po sa buhay po natin kaya nang makatanay Jesus ang fig tree na walang bunga ay kanya itong kiners may you never bear fruit again sa buhay po natin ganoon din the Lord is expecting fruitfulness in our life in the church when you uh, plant a church or when you pioneer a church the Lord is expecting you katulad po ng ginawa ni Lord sa buhay po ni Brother, uh, Brother Eddie Villanueva po Dr. Paul Yonggitsu nasimulan po ang PSMI 1983 the vision given to us by the Lord is nagsimula dito sa Laguna noon po meron pong mga kapatiran o mga elders na nagsasabi Pastor Huwag na tayong pakalayo-layo, dito na lamang tayo sa Laguna o sa Binyan. Kung sinunod po natin yon, eh wala po ang PCM family ngayon. Walang PCM, wala Isabela, may Besia, Bataan, Pampanga, Batangas, Pangasinan, etc. Keso hanggang doon sa Samar. So, the Lord want us to be fruitful. And unfruitfulness is a contributing factor or a sin that cause God's fading away His glory in our lives or in the life of the church. So, be fruitful. Kaya po dyan, be fruitful, kung ano po yung assignment ninyo, ay gampanan po ninyo magpalago, palagoin ang mga ministeryo ang pinagkalaw sa inyo ng Diyos. Tuwa po ko sa nangyayari sa Adelina, namunga ang mga kabataan at nagkaroon po ng PCMI Langkiwa courtesy of the leadership of the young people in the same time na dito rin po sa main church ay uh, pinalago ang mga kabataan at ngayon nagagamit sa mga gawain ng Panginoon number five sins intermarrying foreign men and women in first king 11, 2 to 3. They were from the nations about which the Lord had told the Israelites, You must not intermarry with them, because they will surely turn your hearts after their gods. Nevertheless, Solomon held fast to them in love. He had 700 wives of royal birth and 300 concubines, and his wives led him stray away from God. So, ilang po lahat ang naging asawa ni Solomon? 1,000. 1,000. Si ano po ang pinakasusunod na pinakamarami nyo alam na pinakamaraming asawa sa Pilipinas? Oh, huwag na kayong sabi at judgmental po yun, no? Okay. So, in our present times, as Solomon grew old, his wives turned his heart after other gods, and his heart was not only fully devoted to the Lord his God, as the heart of David, his father had sin. So, yung po mga asawa niya ang ginamit para malayo, siya ang lumayo sa Diyos, hindi ang Diyos ang lumayo sa kanya. Ang kanyang puso ay malayo sa Diyos. So, Solomon did evil in the eyes of the Lord. Why? He did not follow the Lord completely as David's father had done. Now, hayaan po ninyo na illustrate po natin sa kasalakuyang buhay po ng mga churches or iglesias sa Pilipinas. Maraming po mga Kristiyano ang uh, sa dinami-dami ng mga kapwa Kristiyan nila ay eh, nagsisipag-asawa ng mga non-Kristiyan. Siguro naman, hindi pa nagkulang ang kailang mga magulang at ang pasto nila ng mga pagbigay ng mga mensahe na hindi dapat makipag-piyok with the non-believers. I have known of many stories, but I will cite just one or two without mentioning names. Nakakalungkot po. It happened sometime in the 1980s. Isang pamilya, isa po sa mga unang converts, and church. Pag sila po ay na, nakakatuntingnan, pag sila po ay magtutungo sa mga gawain, 
magkakasama sila, halos ay magkakagapay sa kalsada, barkadahan, wika nga, punta sa gawain. Ang sarap po, alahanin noon. Yung ama, pastor, saka yung mga kapatid, dalawang dalaga. Ngayon, yung isa po, naligawan po ng isang non-believer. Ngayon, kasi narinig niya sa pasto nila na pag kayo yung maliligaw sa inyo ng non-believer, dalawin niyo sa church bago niyo sagutin at, at tiyakin niyo na believer na talaga. Eh siguro, nag-Kristyanuhan yung lalaki, sumama sa church, napasagot yung babae, nagpakasal, pagkaraan po ng kasal, limitaw ang kulay ng lalaki. And the woman was taken out of her Christian life. At mula po noon, hanggang sa sila'y uh, magkaanak, magkalamakay ang pamilya, eh hindi na ho nakabalik sa Panginoon. At marami po akong ganyan. And I've been witnessing and counseling parents na ang mga anak nila ay nakikisama, hinayaan nila na makipag-live-in without the benefit of marriage. Sabi ko, pwede naman silang pakasal, bakit di pakasal? Marami po ganyan. Pagka nakakaroon po kami ng mga conferences, ay uh, mga marami po mga testimonies ang nagsasabing ganyan. Siguro kung kukuha ng survey, napakarayan po sa buong Christianhood. Now, tulad po ang nangyari kay Haring Solomon. This 1,000 wives ang nag-draw him away from God. Pero tandaan po ninyo, the Lord's glory fades out, hindi po biglaan, step by step, giving us the opportunity to reconsider our ways at matagpuan po natin ang ating sarili. So, intermarrying foreign men or women. Kaya, ito po isang paalala sa inyo mga kadalagahan, mga kabirataan. Hindi ko po sinasabing huwag kayong ma-inlove. Pero, bago kayo makipag-commit sa inyong isang lalaki o isang babae, try to bring her or try to bring him to Christ. Yan po ang unang mission ninyo. Napakarami ng babae sa mundo, napakarami ng lalaki sa mundo na kristyano. Pero kung hindi nyo mapigilan ang puso ninyo, bring them to Christ in order to avoid the glory fading out of your life as a Christian. Para dun po sa mga natumbok po ng mensaheng ito na hindi pa inaayos, kapatid, ayusin mo ng buhay mo hanggang ngayon panahon pa. All the signs of the end times, of the nearness of Jesus coming is on the way. Kita ang kita po. Kaya please, ayusin na po ninyo ang buhay ninyo. Sin number six, ang Godly Alliance. In 2 Corinthians 6.14 Do not be yoked together with unbelievers for what do righteousness and wickedness have in common or what fellowship can light have with darkness. Actually, number 6 and number 9 are interrelated. Kaya yung pong kapalawanagan po natin kangina ay pwedeng i-apply din po natin dito. We have a very well-known biblical example in the lives of Samson and Delilah. Samson is a Nazirite. Andun yung isa pong Nazirite is a privilege during that time because you have the power of God but that is under the condition na dapat mo sundin no never cut the hair or touch dead bodies or, and many others napakalakas po ni Samson but tulad po ng isang ordinaryong tao meron siyang pusong ikang nga eh, kapag daw puso ang nagutos hahamak yung lahat masunod ka lamang di ba yan ang kasabihan po ng mga Pilipino ngayon Siguro, kanyang din na naging nangyari kay Samson noon. Sa so, dinami-dami ng magandang babae, sa panahon niya, nailab pa kay Delilah. Okay. Samson lost the power of God. Nouna, iniingatan niya, ayaw niyang papilit. Pero dahil sa nanaig yung, yung pangaakit ni Delilah, sige na, kung talagang mahal mo ako, so, sabi mo sa akin ng sekreto, tatlong beses mo na ako niloloko eh. Hindi mo ata ako talaga mahal. So, Namang nakuha sa lambing, 
ni Delilah si Samson, sinabi niya sekreto ng kanyang power. And that's the end of God's power. Immediately, God's power, God's anointing, God's glory departed, or not only faded away, but departed from Samson because of his ungodly alliance or compromise. To compromise is to agree in the part to accept another system. Yung pong compromise ay hindi lang sa system, kundi to accept one's standard. Pag nagpag-compromise ka, for example, sa business, when you partner with a non- with a non-Christian, eh, it can be considered already as a compromise. Bagamat inevitable po, hindi maiwasan sa panahon, pero hindi rin maiwasan na kapag ka ang kapartner mo sa business non-believer ay meron siyang mga punto na hindi maka-Diyos na you have to accept because you are partner in business. Therefore, you are compromising. So, getting a lifetime partner na unbeliever, makakompromise ka. Lalo ko yung uh, story ni Steve Jobs. Yan. Kaya laban niya si Steve Jobs? Jobs? Sino siya? O, oh, siyang inventor ng Apple. O, oh, chika. Yung tatay niyan, at saka yung nanay niyan, eh, makaiba ng religion. Buddhist yata yung tatay, or Muslim, yung nanay, Catholic. So, uh, Later on, naghiwalay, inihiwalay ng babae at pinanak si Steve Jobs. Iniwan din, iniwan din siya ng kanyang nanay. So, ang hirap ng kanyang buhay. At nung siya ay uh, may mampun sa kanya, nagpahalo sa kanya, nag-drop siya dahil sa targang hindi na kayang pag-aralin. Drop out. Imagine, can you imagine na a drop out can make, can be successful to become one of the great inventor. Okay, kaya nga, yun po nakaalam na kasi sa inyo, ayun na pala, pwede na palang maging successful kaya ta drop out siya. Eh kung lahat tayo, lahat kayo ito tulad sa nagawa ni Steve Jobs. Jobs oh, nga. Sorry po, Jobs daw. <laughs> okay. So compromise. A simple uh, compromise. Kristiyano ka, mag-abroad ka, may kulang kang documents, eh, dapat ayusin mo, maglalagay ka, compromise. Do you think this simple, sa'yo, sa atin siguro, akala natin simple, sin lang, pero hindi natutawa ang Diyos? Because God is with us, so since God is holy, we must all be holy. So panghuli po, Seventh sin of, uh, that caused uh, the departure of God's glory in our life or in the life of the church is disobedience. Uh, dito po, gawin po nating example uh, si Saul, King Saul. In 1 Samuel 15 verse 23, Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, He has rejected you as king. Okay. So, King Saul disobeys God. Dapat mayroon po siya opportunity na maging hari ng United Israel and so on. Pero, when he disobeys God because hindi niya ginawa, sino yun ito sa kanya ng Diyos, hindi po nalugod ang Diyos, kaya siya ay penalitan. And to take note na nang siya ay i-anoint ni Lord, noon, eh, permissive will ni Lord ang ginamit ng Diyos noon sapagkat siya ay hindi talaga gusto ng Diyos yan eh. Kaya lang, sabi nga niya, kaya dyan maaalala po natin na kapag tayo nangulit ng panalang sa Diyos, the Lord sometimes hears our prayer but under His permissive will only. Katulad ng pagka-appoint niya, pagka-anoint niya kay Saul. Kasi nakikita na ng Diyos na si Saul ay hindi ka dapat, dapat na maging hari. But still, the Lord anointed Saul because of people's urgent request to give them a king. Ibig nila, kaya nga siyang first king of the United Israel. And so, 
because of that disobedience, Saul lost the privilege or the position of being the first king of the United Kingdom of Israel. He likewise lost God's anointing, and so that caused his downfall in life. Tandaan po natin, simple obedience, deliberate disobedience, and defiant disobedience. All disobedience that cause God to fade His glory out of our life and in the life of the church. So, napakasarap po na maging obedient people of God, children of God. It is our great uh, privilege and concern na uh, whatever God told us or instructed us to do in our 37 years of serving Him, we never failed to obey God. We never disobey God because that is His mandate to us. Obey God. In conclusion, has God's glory actually left the church through though we carry on our ritual works? Talaga bang iniiwan ng glory ng Diyos ang iglesia kahit na ginagawa natin ang ating mga assignments sa Kanya. Paul says, We believers are God's temple where the Spirit of Christ resides. God wants our wholehearted obedience and love. He will not stay where He is not welcome. Kung hindi na po siya welcome, ay hindi pa mag stay ang just doon. Because our God is a super sensitive guest who lives offended by the poor welcome he receives. Imagine, sa halip na ibigay po natin the best welcome or uh, sa ating Diyos, eh, look warm, then na-open po on noon. Remember that our God is a consuming fire who brings spirit judgment upon the disobedient. Tandaan po natin, follow God, obey God, because whenever we obey God, God is bringing spirit judgment upon the disobedient people. Lalo na po sa panahon ngayon, eh, dapat, kung sina, ano sinabi ng Diyos, sundin po natin, the Lord, how do the Lord spoke to us in this times of pandemic. Sa pamagitan po ng mga namumuno, ng presidente, ng mayor natin, pag sinabi huwag lalabas, huwag lumabas, pag sinabi mag face, face mask, mag face mask, pag sinabi bawal mga bata, bawal ang mga bata, kaya ako hindi maalis, kaya hanggang kahit milyon-milyon na nanalangin na Lord, pwede po bang alis na ninyo at tapos na pandemic na ito? Because for as long as there are there were many stubborn hearts or stubborn people. The Lord being offended will never take out this muna. Pero tandaan ninyo, God will deliver us. Kaya tandaan po, doon tayo mananangan. God's glory moves out of the temple reluctantly. While, what do, we say, what do we mean by saying reluctantly? Medyo matabang sa loob niya, pilit sa loob niya, ayaw niya pero pero nahipilit na siya eh. And hindi lang yun. In stages, ibig sabihin nun, hindi siya biglang aalis. Oh. Hindi, siya biglang, hindi siya biglang aalis. Stage by stage yan. Bakit? Bakit hindi bigla? Kasi binibigyan tayo ng pagkakataon na ma-realize natin yung ating ginawa ay mali. Yet, we people did not realize what is happening until it was too late. Kumisan, Saka na lang natin na nare-realize yung nais gawin ng Diyos sa atin, na manawa natin, kung huli na at nangyari na ang lahat. Kaya sa panahon ito, tandaan po natin, the Lord's glory moves out of the temple reluctantly, napipilitan lang, hindi siya masaya, because ayaw niya tayong iwan eh, kasi mahal niya tayo, at hindi lang yon in stages pa, unti-unti, unti-unti, because binibigyan pa tayo ng pagkakataon na ma-realize natin natin ang pagkakamali. In Deuteronomy 4.29, But if from there you seek the Lord your God, you will seek Him with your heart and with all your soul. Tinan po ninyo, the Lord's glory of the Lord lives a temple. The Lord said, said unto thee that if thou holdest believe, you should see the glory of God. Babalik po ang glory ng Diyos kapag tayo po ay muling 
na numbalik at nagsisya natin kasalanan sa Kanya. Ulitin po natin, reviewin po natin ang seven sins that God's move out. Number one, rebellion. At alam po ninyo ang uh, number two, idolatry. It is a worship of idol. Number three, unfaithfulness. Number four, unfruitfulness. So the Lord expected the church, all of us, to be fruitful. Number five, intermarrying foreign men and women. Number six, ungodly alliance or compromise. And number seven, disobedience. And uh, in ending, as we conclude, what happens when God moves out? We lose our protection, we lose blessings, we lose fellowship, we lose opportunities, and most of all, we lose salvation. Pero take note, the Lord is doing it reluctantly because He is giving us enough time to consider our ways and means. Hallelujah. Maraming salamat po, Diyos na buhay na makapangyarihan sa lahat. Lord, sa oras nito sa gabi nito, I pray that you touch the hearts of the people out there watching and listening to your messages. That Lord, you really don't want to live or your glory in our life to fade out or your glory to live out our lives in the church, in our nation. But if we will be continuing to living in sin, Lord, ikaw may sabi niyan, Reluctantly, whether you like it or not, you're living because you cannot tolerate evil. You cannot tolerate sins. You cannot tolerate things that distracted your being a God. So, salamat po Lord na marami <clears throat> nawa sa inyo o sa lahat ng mga nakapakinig at nanood sa gabing ito. Touch their hearts pa nawaan po sa kanila. Kung hindi man sila, sa mga mahal sa buhay nila, ng kailang pamilya, kailang mga anak, kailang mga kaibigan, at sino man na mahalaga sa kailang buhay, ay isya nila ang balitang ito. Ang mesayang ito, o basa ngayon, hanggat hindi pa uli lahat, hanggat meron pang counting glory ng Panginoon o ng Diyos na natitira sa kailang buhay, sa buhay ng church na kailang pinamamunuan, ay magbago na sila ng puso at kaisipan ng ways of life na ways of living to completely obey and do all things according to God's way. Salamat po Lord na marami and we pray that in these times of pandemic, Lord have mercy on your people. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on the church, Lord. Patawad kung marami kami ang nagagawa mga kasalanan at mga lapses against you and against your word against your commandments Hallelujah at sa halip Panginoon Diyos dilayin po namin na patuloy na andyan po yung protection ay yung blessings the opportunities as you lead us into the way of life especially in these times of pandemic by giving us an inspiration that though you are not yet withdrawing this pandemic, you are with us. And since you are with us, there's, there must be no worry because you will be protecting us by your most precious blood. And at the end, you will be delivering us from this. Salamat po, Lord, marami. At sa araw na ito, nawa ang mensahe mo ay magsilbing Espresyon at kalakasan sa lahat. Puri ito lating ka o Diyos. In Jesus' name. Ang gandang gabi po sa inyo lahat at nawa ay may share po ninyo ito sa mga kaibigan, kakilala, here and abroad, sapagkat kailangan-kailangan po nilang malaman na hindi sa lahat ng panahon ang glory ng Diyos ay nasa ating buhay, nasa church. Sometimes it faded, faded out when sins are committed. Remember the seven sins. 
God bless you. So